Great morning, holy brother. Thank you so much for joining us on our pathway to peace inside the Garden of Peace. If you're following along, we're on page 313. And today's lesson is going to be called Terrible Tears. Don't use them, lose them, abuse them, because you shouldn't be crying over things that you shouldn't. Because if you do, God's going to say, oh, you're crying about this? God forbid, I'm going to give you something to cry about. And we don't want that. And when we look at things with positive attitude, why in the world can we ever cry about something when we're getting blessed every single day? Somebody called me up yesterday. One of my guys who always asks for advice. You know, he's a little help along the way. Some people call me every day. But others I hear from once in a while. But it's nice to know that when they are looking for help and seeking advice, they can call up, listen to a friend, have somebody to be able to speak to about it. There was somebody who was suing him for a lot of money. Really, really big issues about something he didn't do. Really crazy. And he was getting really stressed out about it. He said, you know, there are some days he can handle it. You know, he understands. And then some other days it just like washes over him like a wave and makes his whole day down. And it affects everything with his relationship. And he's sad and he's mad and he's angry. He said, what can he do? What can he do? So you take a step back out of the situation. Say, listen, for whatever reason right now, whether it ends up losing money or not, not losing money, it doesn't matter. It, God is bringing him something right now that is seemingly stressful for him. Stop for a minute. What's going on? Where is it coming from? And why is it happening? Is it making you turn to God a little bit more and to scream out and to say, I really need help right now? I don't know what to do in this situation. It's beyond my control. Yeah, there's a reason for that. Maybe there's nothing. You get the best lawyer. You get the best case. You put in the time, whatever it might be. He's doing his shtadlis. He's doing as much work as he can physically. But he has to know at the end of the day, it is not up to him. And there's a higher power at play right now. Turn to him. Use a little more emotion. Be a little more real. Don't just say, yeah, thank you, Hashem, for this and this and this. You know, and I appreciate this. And help me with this. Say, Hashem, help me with this. I don't know what to do. Right now, it's like he seems like he's drowning. And he needs a lifeboat. He needs somebody to throw him a ring to help him survive and to float in everything that he's in. Use a little more emotion. Hashem wants you to be real in your relationship. Not just to talk to him mechanically or robotically, but put your heart into it. And then when you know for real that there's somebody you can rely on, that somebody you can turn to, okay, so maybe, God forbid, he could have had a crazy accident, could have had tremendous illness. Whatever reason, for example, he might have to lose some money at this moment, use it as a blessing. Say, take this away from me, and just don't let me suffer in other ways because of it. Whether it's a $65 ticket because your insurance ticket ran out, or you're parked in the wrong place, Thank you, Hashem, for this opportunity to be able to take that money and put it where it needs to go. You are so much smarter than me. You know so much more than me. So if that's where it needs to go, thank you, and I'm so happy that you're able to take care of it so I don't have to worry about it anymore. I appreciate everything that you're doing and helping it make me come closer to you. Be a little more real about it. Maybe if you're in a dire strait, when, when you talk to God for an hour a day, not only do you have more feeling on it, Maybe once a year or once in 10 years, you need to do a six-hour session to be able to open your heart, to put everything away, put away your phone, stay up all night, whatever it might be, and develop your core relationship with Hashem. Maybe this is time for an emergency situation where you need to stop what you're doing and reassess your position in life. Where am I now and how can I be better? Get off the rat race and reevaluate yourself. Do some real hardcore introspection and some absolute teshuva. Whatever it might be, once in a while, God says, wake up. Stop what you're doing and come back to me. This is why you're here in this world. And I need you to understand your place and your purpose. So please take this as a message with love. Not with hate. Not with anger. Not with arrogance. And not with upset witness. And not with depression at all. Please use this as a purely positive purpose. And come back to me. Lovingly. So, anyway... This guy we talked about having an inflated ego yesterday. Somebody who imagines himself to be super special. He is the shiz. He is the bomb. He is the best thing since sliced bread. And nobody on this planet can come close to how amazing I am. That's it. 
and I need a woman that's going to be just as awesome dacious as me. That's it. Who possesses every positive, conceivable attribute that is amazing. And so every girl he meets is not living up to standards. You know, they're just not good enough for him. What's he talking about? Time goes on. Days go by. Weeks go by. Months go by. And years past this guy. Because what's he going to do? Every girl that he meets is just not spectacular enough for him. And he spends the best years of his life searching for that one shidduch who might be worthy. They're not worthy. A woman who is a mere product of his imagination somewhere in his head because nobody can ever fill every single checkbox that he puts down in front of them. Ultimately, he gives up. He drops out of his Torah studies, drops out of learning, and becomes a big ball of nervous nerves, and the years continue to march on. In the end, with no other choice, guess what? He feels like he cannot find this person, and he's getting super old, and he just needs somebody in his life that he can talk to, he can relate to, and just marries any Joe Schmo girl, whatever. The type of Rav adds with great emotion and heartache. Behold, many older men come to me with tears on their cheeks, crying, where is my Batloni? Where is my Bashert? Where is my other half? Where is my soulmate that I've been searching for forever? Forty days before a baby is conceived, what happens? A heavenly voice screams out and decrees, Batloni, the daughter of such and such a person, for Ben Pony is going to be assigned for this boy of such and such a person. Yes, I replied, you already have met this person. You have that shidduch. You have that other half somewhere walking around the world. And you may have met her many, many, many years ago when people first began recommending shidduchim for you, for matches. And guess what? You were there, pfft, you blow her off. You completely rejected her. She didn't find favor in your eyes because of some foolish reason that you're holding on to. And guess what? Because you didn't want her anymore. She came your way. She passed you by. You lost it. And guess what? She can marry somebody else. And that might not be that person that is going to help you be the best that you can be. And that's the fate of people who are arrogant hearted, walk twisted paths, and totally skew what is best for them. You can have people that marry four, five, six, seven, eight times to other people. And are they going to have possibly a good relationship? Can they possibly enjoy the presence? Can they have good times together? Yes, 100%. But are you going to be looking for somebody who's going to help complete you to be the best person you can be? We all have, many of us who are married have wives, thank God. And we can have amazing times together. We can have great dates. We can get married and have amazing lives with them. But when it comes to the point where you're going to have arguments, Nobody has a perfect marriage, my friend. It is not always smooth sailing, <laughs> easy gemstones that are glowing and brilliantly bright for you. When you have a time where your wife is going to argue with you, how are you going to look at that moment? Are you going to say, this is a terrible woman. I'm sorry that they ever got married and she's so annoying. And I wish I had a better girl, a more attractive girl, a non-complaining girl. Does that exist even in this world? Probably not. But when you take it with love and affection and say you're an amazing person and you're only helping me get better, you look at that situation with a new outlook and a positive attitude. Then you can never get upset when somebody yells at you or criticizes you because you understand this is my message from God because I want to be a better person and I love you for it and I appreciate you even more so for it. Young men forfeit their intended, their beshert, their other halves when they reject marital propositions without consulting reliable spiritual guides. What type of girl do I want? Somebody who's amazing looking or somebody who's going to help me be what I can be and be an amazing mother who has great character traits. What are you looking for? Have a guide that can help get you set on life. Even when you're married already, when somebody talks to you, how can I take this relationship? How can I take these words and use it for my best? I'm having a hard time. Fine. So talk to a friend. Talk to a rabbi. Talk to a spiritual advisor that can help you get the best out of your situations. Many times we get stuck and we can't see for ourselves what's going on. And we need a third person outside party to help look at that situation with better eyes to give us a better look on it. 
Because when we're stuck in it, when we're selfish, when we're arrogant, and when we get hurt, we don't want to hear it anymore. And we get we drown in that sea of emotions. So you need somebody outside that can help you call up a friend or whoever it might be. Say, listen, here's the situation. What would you do in this situation if it was you? And then see what kind of answers you get. Da'as Torah. Somebody who are based in good rabbinical scholars and opinions and knowledge would have advised them not to turn down necessarily these great proposals when they have amazing situations at hand. Help them, what would I do? What should I do in this situation? Namely, the shidduch most likely destined from heaven and then just need a little help to go your way. When you have a question about halacha and you put a, a flesh spoon into a dairy oven or whatever it might be, you might ask somebody, your rabbi, hey, what do I do in this situation? You have somebody you can turn to, hopefully. Make yourself a rab. You're supposed to appoint somebody in your life who you can turn to for these situations. It's not just meat and milk. It's not just Shabbos questions. When you have a question in life, even when it comes to a future wife or an actual wife, and you're stuck in a situation, call them up. Don't be afraid to ask. Don't be too haughty. Put yourself down and say, hey, I might need help now. It's okay to ask for help at many times in your life. No matter what the situation, no matter what the question, don't feel like you're above it. Call somebody. Pick up the phone. Send a text nowadays, whatever it might be. The choice is up to you, my holy brother. The stifler Rav also said, when our sages say that 40 days before a child's conception, a heavenly voice issues forth and proclaims, like we just said, this girl, this daughter of so-and-so, is going to be set for the son of so-and-so. It is not like a decree that absolutely must happen. It is not a certainty that these two are absolutely going to get married. Rather, the heavenly voice proclaims this is the right way. This is the proper thing. We wish that she is going to be suitable for him. We wish that they're going to come together in love, in unison, in harmony, and that he can find her with ease, with pleasant trees, and that a heavenly assistance will be done in this exact direction. But even so, people are given Bechira. People are given absolute free choice in this world. A person through his actions can cause things to come about and he can make it that he may not be worthy of her, that he may not merit this girl and she may not be his. You want to make yourself to be in a situation that you lovingly accept a girl who is going to be good for you and help you in the best possible ways. The current circumstance is what counts right here and right now. In light of the above, which we just said, a person might be mistaken and think that his soulmate is completely lost. He might say, oh yeah, I was a terrible person. I was off the derech. I wasn't following the Torah ways. I wasn't doing teshuva. I was a terrible person that many times in my life. Right? And especially if he knows he committed many transgressions and he violated many prohibitions in the Torah, what are you going to do? He might think that he's lost. Hello? But what do we say? Ein Shem Yeyosh. Right? It is not so. You are never lost. You can always come back and wake up. It is not so. Teshuva is always extremely effective. And Hashem can do anything in the world. You think God can't move mountains? You think God can't get rid of tickets for you? You think God can't get rid of lawsuits and litigations for you? You're out of your mind? Who's the one who created in the first place? He has plenty of people for you. Plenty of matches, plenty of girls, and can find one for any single one that's going to be amazing for you. Pray to Hashem every single day and ask Him for forgiveness for what we've done, how we acted, whether we were arrogant or not, up until this day today. And whatever you've done to reject the beauty, the bounty, the blessing that God has sent you up until today, since anyone Hashem can bring you, can bring you true soulmates, any job Hashem brings you can be the best, most monetarily advantageous thing for you. Any deal Hashem can bring to you in a moment. Who cares if you've lost hundreds of thousands of dollars up until this point? You don't think God can flip it around and bring you a deal that is even better for you right now? He can bring you all these customers and clients and line them up at your door, have them texting you nonstop, bringing you this kind of business and blessing? 
Ask Hashem for a new beginning now. Whatever you've done before. Ask for mercy. Ask Hashem for sending to you every single blessing. Hashem will have mercy and will send you exactly what you need right now as we witnessed many times with our own eyes. Many young men who have come to Yeshiva and did Teshuva merited amazing, great wives and completely righteous royal children. Happy are they with what they've been given now, that they understand how everything comes their way and they can control to bring themselves the best blessings right now. Whatever you've done, stop. Open your eyes, come back and say, I love you, Hashem, and I want to have the best relationship ever in my life. And thank you for all the hardships because those are the things that have helped me come to you and to be closer and to be more real in life in everything that I do. And with that, have an awesome day, Amazing rest of your day.